Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we are going to be playing against a player called Nothingness, and we are going to be trying out the Goliath comp, so... I don't think I've played a Leper in a very, very long time, but we are finally going to give him a try, and we are playing against what looks like a mix and match of a very interesting Mark team, actually. Yeah, this has to be a Mark team. Hmm. I do like what I'm seeing, but uh, we are going to start off with a battle ballot because the leper does like having uh, some accuracy buffs. You know, he's a leper, he's blind. But uh, we we are definitely going to need it against the grave robber with that amount of dodge if it ever comes to that. So there's going to be a stunning blow right now. I could flare that, but I don't think I will actually. I think I'll go for a purge first or a, a revenge. And then if he wants to mark right now I can just flare and then I flare both the mark and the stun so he's gonna have to make a decision that he doesn't want to do so he's gonna have to shoot without a mark which is obviously not what he wants right uh, because he does have um, only abilities that kind of benefit off mark unless he wanted to go for panic darts or something so now he goes for call the shot and I can just flare two actions away and kind of just enjoy myself here so yeah, that's two actions of him gone. It was both the stun and the mark, and right now we're absolutely enjoying ourselves. So considering there's not even a piercing quarrel and the fact that there's a grave robber using thrown dagger, I kind of wish I had... Um... Oh, that's bad. I kind of wish I had my Blork of Light here, but since I don't, I'm going to have to play this a little bit differently. I think I'm going to go for an early finale on the Occultist. So I'm going to drop that Holy Lance, do some very decent damage, and he's down to 11 HP. With 11 HP, I should have 9 to 18 finale damage, so I can start off with a finale if I want to. <laughs> Do I, though? If I fail, it's not going to be good. It's going to be an immediate lunge, actually. It's almost going to drop us to that store, but it's not going to do quite enough. Which means that I can just drop a finale right here. So it's going to be 9 to 16, actually. And Ooh, we roll for we roll for 9. Okay. No, I mean, we roll for 11, so that wasn't enough for a kill. Uh, 9 to 16 and we roll for 11. That's really bad. <laughs> that is really bad. So this is kind of the problem with this team is that if your Jester goes to position 1, then the Crusader and the Leper kind of have to juggle and you don't want to juggle with a Leper. You most definitely do not want to do that. So right now we are put in a position where my opponent has 3 heals and I am not having a good time here, absolutely. Oh, crit 16, crit 12, what is going on here? What is this nonsense? Okay, not all is lost though. I'm gonna have to say, not all is lost. Because this is definitely a horrible start, but I, I think it could be worse. I think it could indeed be worse, so we're, we're gonna keep playing and see how it goes, because we do have a Leper, we do have uh, an Arbalist with Finisher, so we will be able to do some very decent damage. I'm honestly not really going to care too much about... Oh no. Oh, you... Goddamn Jester, you monkey. Oh, I hate Occultist so much. I really hate Occultist. This is so annoying. Oh, maybe I should have just gone for the immediate Chop or, or Purge or Hue or something. Because this Jester is goddamn annoyance in a nutshell. It's horrible. I don't think I'm even going to try saving him, honestly. If you want to go for, for the kill, then go for it. The thing is, he doesn't have any finishing characters, right? In terms of finishing uh, abilities, he only has punch and uh, also aim shot, if there is a mark. But since there isn't a mark, well, not so much. 11 to 20. If I get this, nah, I roll for 11, of course. God. Damn it, I, I'm really hating this match so far. I'm absolutely hating this match. It's gonna be a Shadow Fate. Oh, that's that's kind of a weird play, actually. That's gonna put... Oh, I mean, that's probably gonna get a kill on my on my Jester. I think he's going for that, but I could uh, go for a stun here on that Occultist. And honestly, I'm done with the Jester by now. If you want to go for a kill on the Jester, then just go for it. I'm, I'm done with him. I don't want to see him ever again. He has totally disappointed me so far. So I'm gonna stun that occultist. Since it's a musketeer and not an arbos, he can't flare both stuns. <laughs> so that is a really good outcome for us. And we're gonna see what he goes for, because if he goes for a launch, then I'm gonna have a 50-50 of getting a kill on that occultist. And if I get this kill, I think I'm actually winning here, because with the occultist gone, he doesn't have much disruption left, and my leper is gonna do an unreasonable amount of damage, which is awesome. He can't even stun my leper reliably. Oh, he's gonna go for the he's gonna go for the heal, okay. 
Well, in that case, I'm just gonna heal. I'm gonna get some damage on the Crusader. And by some damage, I mean an absolute mid roll and no crit either, even though I have revenge. But what can you do? I'm gonna go for the heal, get some free damage out of it, and hopefully get a 50 50 death, though. Wow, that's lucky. Holy Mary Mother of Joseph. Okay, so it, had, it must have been like an 80 of getting the kill and he doesn't get it. Oh, that is unbelievably lucky. And now we get the 50. You know, that's why you never surrender. There's always hope. There is always hope. Wow, that, that's just an insane turnout of events. That is brutal. I can't believe it. Uh, I guess we just drop a harvest here, honestly. And we even get a bleed on top? What is this game about? There is no justice. There's absolutely no justice. I get a bleed on the Crusader as well. Wait, why do you not go for... Oh, that's a mistake now. That's a huge mistake. I can go for a heal on the on the Jester at this point. I could save him. Or do I? Do I save the Jester? Or do I just go for a flare and then start stunning his Crusader? Um, honestly, I don't feel like I have to save the Jester. I, I don't really care too much about him. I'm gonna go for... Oh, I'm gonna bait him. Yeah, let's go for a chop here. Ah, god damn, crit is actually giving him some prods, so... I don't do... I don't do enough damage, sadly. So yeah, this Leper having a Snuff... Oh, well, Snuff was actually giving me plus damage from acting first, but I guess that didn't matter. He's gonna go for the aim shot. Finally gets the death, though. It's, it's been a, a long while since you... Got, uh... Got a death blow on my characters, I'm gonna have to say, like, so unlucky not killing that chest and really so, so, so unlucky for him. But now we are in a winning position, and obviously we want to stay in that position. So he goes Flare right after me going, uh, no, I mean, he goes Shadow Fade right after me going for a Flare, so definitely a good play. But now I get to stun this Crusader at this door, and I do still have two healing characters, well, he only has one. Now, he has two healing characters, but I don't expect this Crusader to last too long. The problem here is that we don't have a Bounty Hunter, so that's kind of um, a big downside of playing the Goliath comp, is that you don't have a Bounty Hunter to get those confirmed death blows, you also don't have Mark Synergy for the Arbals, you don't have that much disruption, you mostly only have stuns, but you just kind of have to live with it. I think here we go for an obvious hue, trying to clear that corpse, and uh, the corpse is gonna go away soon. I'm, I'm gonna need another hue, or maybe like a bullet or something. Okay, I'm gonna keep in mind that the Jester died round 4, because I think that could be useful. Yeah, Jester died round 4, which means that by round 9 the corpse should be gone. But because that's what's gonna allow me to use Bolan actually to use the finisher here with the Arbos. He's gonna go for a big lunge crit, honestly it doesn't even matter all that much, we just heal. And then after the Crusader passes, wow that's a good heal. After the Crusader passes we just go for another stun on him and uh, get a 70 stun and also maybe get a death blow. So that is, that is the plan, that is a hope, that is a dream. So typically this team is actually played a little differently from what I'm doing. I think there's a Zealous here on this Crusader, though I, I really don't like Zealous on damage Crusaders. And I also think that the Leper has Purge instead of maybe Hue or maybe Chop instead of Chop probably. And the Arbalus instead of having Finisher has the Medic's full plate, which I, I really don't like it. It gives you an extra 15 prot, it gives you more healing skills. Uh, and it gives you less stress taken, but honestly, even with 20 prot, if there's a piercing quarrel, you're still gonna get stunned. Uh, I mean, you're still gonna get uh, destroyed with your arbals if there's a sniper shot, because this just pierces 20 prot, and 5 plus 15 is still 20, so it's really not gonna help you in those situations. The healing skills are good, but she already cures bleed, and the minus stress taken isn't that impactful, so I'm gonna have to say that just going for for a support finisher is really important here because in damage teams you have to get kills and to get kills you need characters that have finishing abilities if you want to get them reliably honestly and obviously and uh, to get them reliably you need either finishing abilities or you need finisher trinkets and the more of those you have the more likely you are to get some kills so i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna go for actually a surprising uh, preemptive heal on this Crusader because I don't feel like the match is going to be decided on me doing damage to that Grave Robber or the Musketeer right now. It's going to be decided on me killing this enemy Crusader and keeping my Crusader alive. So if I can do that, I think I'm winning here. And also, since there's no Piercing Quarrel or uh, the Minye Ball counterpart for that Musketeer, she can't really hurt my Crusader all that much. And the Grave Robber doesn't even half pick to the face, actually, so I can just leave her for last. Sadly, I don't have Purge. Uh, Purge is a nice, uh, a nice ability, but I really, really like the versatility, versatility of having Chop and Hue, so I just stick with it for 
uh, as much as I can. So let's drop a Holy Land series some very nice damage on that Muskie. So the, kind of the problem with this team is that you have to rely on the Leper for damage. So if he gets disrupted, you're really not having a good time. Oh, actually a crit thrown dagger. Would you look at that? It actually does enough damage through the prot. I'm surprised. The Leather Bandulier coming in clutch. Uh, we're gonna go for just a heal here and wow, another crit heal, god that marvelous. Imagine if she had the medic's full point, she'd be healing for like, uh, I mean it would have been a heal for like 24 right there, that would be brutal. I think actually we just chopped the corpse here, yeah I just chopped the corpse so I can start healing both characters and once the musketeer is fully gone, the grave robber can't even play anymore. And if she decides to go for a, for a shadow feed here, I can just go flare or something like that. And I am very likely to hit her and just uh, do some damage here. And I can still heal her, so it's totally fine. I get knocked back again, but I honestly don't care all that much. I'm gonna... I would drop a heal immediately, but even with my extra 41 accuracy right now, I don't think I have a confirmed hit chance with you, so I'm gonna wait for that 10 dodge to go away. So I'm gonna drop a Holy Lance first and just enjoy myself. So there's probably gonna be a Shadow Fade, that's pretty much the only thing she can do. But we are gonna probably flare here and also hew. So let's flare. There's no extra 20 dodge because she's stealth. That uh, she only gets that when she has the cloak and dagger trinket. So it doesn't really matter which action I go for first. And right now I can just drop a hew here. And wow, that's a lot of damage. Good job, Leper. It's too late for him to be that impactful, but. Yeah, the, having the Leper here as the last character really is awesome. And now, since it's round 9, the Arbalus actually has her finisher with Volus. So I'm gonna have to say this is beyond lost. So nothingness. That was a, that was a surprisingly close match, especially from the start when I, feel, when I failed that finale. I was not expecting to win after I failed that finale. I was honestly expecting to lose here. I can just go for a stun. I don't have to go for a heal. You just go for a stun here. You have battle ballot, so you can't even miss. There's no way you don't, you don't go for stuns. You just prevent the flow of damage, and that's going to be a surrender because I was just going to kill the Sarbolts right now with the Musketeer and then clear the corpse with the Leper, and then the Grave Robber can't do anything. So I hope you enjoyed this short showcase of this Leper team. There is another way you can play it, and I will show you this uh, other way that you can also play the team. But I will say that this um, original way of playing it with the Leper is more reliable, and it's overall better. Because you do have the Battle Ballot buff with, uh, with the Jester, and that's really important. That's definitely very important. There's another way of playing it, though. You say goodbye to the Jester, let me just put that here, and instead you actually just take a Bounty Hunter instead, as you would with a Mark team, but instead of having like a Jester, then you have a Leper, which is another damage source, which is awesome. And then instead of taking the Exotic Snuff, because you won't have that much accuracy, you go for double damage trinkets, <laughs> you go for an Eagle Eye Talisman, and then you can bring uh, the Gladiator Mask, if I could actually find it. Uh, where the hell is the trinket? Let's sort by class, and there we go. You take the Gladiator Mask, so now you have plus a lot of damage, and you still go for the Revenge, and what this basically means is that you're going to have the confirmed kills with... Um, with the Bounty Hunter, and what that means with both Marks and the Arbalist going for damage, and yeah, here you actually take both damage trinkets, since you have a Mark, you do take the Stabilizing Tiller, uh, you should kind of just keep the Bounty Hunter alive for as long as possible to get those skills, and I do believe the Crusader here could also go with Zealous Accusation and, uh, and Rit of Execution if you want to get some extra death blows, but uh, that's honestly unnecessary, just going for double stun is better in my opinion. So what you can actually do, what this actually allows you to do is, if, if you meet something like a flagellant in the front line, since you have a leper, you can just nuke him and then kill him immediately with the finish him. And that's pressure that's always there and that your opponent is always going to have to deal with. And you also have smite to do something similar and you just have a huge amount of damage output. So let's give this team a try. Let's, uh, it's a little bit different, but we are going to see if we can make it work. It is definitely powerful, you still have the mark synergy between the Bounty Hunter and the Arbalist, it's, it, it absolutely destroys teams. It's really good. It's only problem is that, of course, only one finishing character, so you have to be very careful of that. And also, barely any accuracy buffs, so... 
that's also not going to help for you. And the leper no longer has snuff, so I'm either going to have to rely on the arbles for flaring, or flaring the stuns away, or I'm going to have to get lucky with the move resistances. <laughs> he does still have 60 move resistance space, so honestly, he should be able to resist some of those. So we are playing against another mark team. This one looks a little less traditional, way less traditional. What the hell is this? This isn't even a mark team. I mean, it is. It's... It is, is it? Is it a Mark team? It's like a mix and match between Mark and, and Stress, actually. Because this Crusader doesn't even have stun, he has a rate of execution and uh, zealous accusation. Wow, immediate vendetta on the Arbalest of all characters. Why? Why not the Bounty Hunter? The Bounty Hunter is the one that actually has more than 5 dodge in this team. I am, I am surprised. Okay, there's two things I can go for. I can stun the Occultist, which is very important here. And uh, I will, even though it's an 85% chance of going of getting that stun to actually land. I think it's very important because if the if the occultist gets like a pull here, I am not going to be enjoying myself at all. So I would love to actually have enough accuracy to go for a chop, and technically I do, but that's super greedy. <laughs> that is beyond greedy to go for a chop right now. I could also just chop a sniper shot and hope for a crit or a high roll. I, I can do a myriad of things here to that uh, to that occultist to get him out, and uh, I am gonna try going for something like that. I can also go for pull, but nah, I don't think that's that important. I doubt that we get a debuff here, but that would be wonderful. If I actually got the debuff, that would be absolutely amazing, but nah, it's a 30% chance, so what can you do? We're just gonna mark, we're gonna go revenge, and then we're gonna go sniper shot. Oh, he's actually just gonna fire. Well, I don't mind, I honestly don't mind. Removing my bounty hunter action right now, which isn't that important for his arbalist action, is honestly totally fine here. What did he even go for first? Did he really go Vendetta first with a team like this against a team like mine? That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Like if you're playing what he has right now, you either go you go Demon's Bull first. There's no world where you don't go Demon's Bull first. I don't know what he was thinking, honestly. You could also just go Demon's Bull the Bounty Hunter, and then my my Crusader uh, pretty much has to heal for you know, as long as the Bounty Hunter is in position 1, because the Leper doesn't want to go to position 3, obviously. And right now I get to drop a Sniper Shot, and if we dealt enough damage, we would just drop that Occultist anyway. So him clearing the mark means that the Occultist stays alive for a little bit, uh, that is true. And I can see him, I can definitely see him going for um, a pull right now on, on the Bounty Hunter, I'd say. Or maybe do us advance first, so yeah, so I can stun the Occultist, that's also an idea. No, he's gonna go Demon Spawn on the Arbos. I honestly think that's a misplay, <laughs> especially since it fails. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible for my opponent. So there's two things I can do here. I'm gonna go for... Hmm, what am I gonna go for? I'm gonna go for a, a Hue first, because I, I would go for a stun first on the Crusader, but what would happen after that is that the higher man just goes forward with Duelist Advance and then I don't drop you. I don't drop the Occultist Santos here and I don't want that to happen. So right now he's probably going to go for a heal and now I can go for a stun on the Occultist and I'm still going to be enjoying myself. Oh, crit heal for 12. There goes my damage. That sucks. That really sucks, but it's okay. We go for another stun here on this Occultist. And right now my opponent's between... How, how do you put it? He's between a, a rock and a hard place, right? Yeah, and uh, basically... I'm gonna get the kill. Even if you go for a heal, I'm still gonna go sniper shot and I'm gonna get the kill with finish him. There is a world where I miss the sniper shot. Actually, can I even miss 110 accuracy versus 15 dodge? No, I can't miss. Well, if he gets a crit heal, that's not a crit heal. Uh, it's a min roll with the medic's full plate, actually, which means that that uh, occultist is just gone. And you can see just the amount of offense that this team has. It's brutal. It really is brutal with this leper. It, it gives you damage to positions 1 and 2 that you typically don't have just with the arbals. It's absolutely insane. But uh, it also clearly has its downsides. If you had gone for a demon's ball and the bounty hunter, I would be having a much worse time than what I have right now. But yeah, and the Leper is also relatively self-sustainable with Solemnity. It heals you for 22. If you get a crit heal, you pretty much rise like a phoenix from the ashes. Imagine you're 0 HP. Uh, you know, your opponent just has to do multiple actions to get you down to 0 HP, as my opponent's having to do here. And then you just click Solemnity and you're full HP again <laughs> and and clear a lot of stress as well. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna go for a stun right now. I don't think there's any world where I don't go for a stun. 
even if he goes for a flare and clears the stun, that's a plus action trade for me, because I have four, he only has three, so stuns right now are an absolute win. That's probably going to be a grave shot, right? Does it do eight? It probably does. Oh, it doesn't, really. Even with revenge and the vendetta, it doesn't do enough, because he has parrying dagger for some reason. Hmm, interesting. Uh, his team looks like he, he had to make a lot of compromises, so he doesn't even have that much of a confirmed finishing character, it's just a higher man. So his finishing character is kind of like a support uh, support character here. Okay, there's two things I want to do. I definitely want to chop someone. Or do I want to hew? I think doing hew isn't isn't worth it here. I go for a chop on the Herman. I could have dealt enough damage to kill him, by the way. I did, like, what, 21 to 39 or something crazy like that? No, it was higher than that. Chop is insane with this damage setup. I could have gotten a lot of damage. Oh, that's greedy. Oh, no, 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 that's a bad play. That's just a bad play. That means I just get a kill now. Um, not going for... Actually, what could he go for? <laughs> Preemptive heal? <laughs> Preemptive heal into a sniper shot crit. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do once this team gets a character advantage. I just take another kill here because I'm playing a Leper and you don't even have reach into position 1. And that's just a surrender. So, Leper, is he bottom tier? No, he's not bottom 4 characters. Is he versatile? No, he only works in like two teams, which are these two teams. <laughs> There's literally no other way you'd play the Leper other than this kind of setup. You just bring him with a lot of damage and you make him do a lot of a lot of that a lot of damage. That's really his goal. He's just a, a big boy damage dealer. There's another way you can play the Leper if you're clinically insane. You put a snuff on him and you put a pit fighter's helm, and you bring uh, instead of these two, you bring these two and instead of this you bring this if you're clinically insane you can do this and you play a stress leper team if you watch from 35 gm and you can see him doing this and he actually did a pretty okay job i refuse to play this i am honestly genuinely done with stress leper i hate him so much this is not how you play leper you can only use intimidate from position one by the way the debuff chance is only 100 and you're not going to take extra debuff chance trinkets because you need both of these it only works in position 1, it only does 25 stress, which is laughable, and uh, it does basically no damage, and if he gets disrupted, he becomes totally useless to the team. It's it's a horrible character, it, it is absolutely horrible. He also doesn't provide anything for the team, other than some disruption with Purge if you do want to do that, and I guess D stealth if you're in, if you're in position 1. But, yeah, if, if someone gets pulled behind you, you can't do anything, and you can't even heal other characters or do team buffs or anything like that, so if you want to play a good Leper team, if you like your Lepers from the base game, but you haven't been able to make them work, which kind of happens a lot, then definitely play the two teams I was playing and not stress Leper. That's not the way to play them. So I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!